Fox News Hillary Golson is live tonight with more. And Hillary, I know you have a lot of people in this community who come from that region. Yeah, absolutely. A number from the diaspora of Ukraine who are here in Metro Detroit, some 40,000 in fact, and a number of them along with their neighbors and friends have gathered here in Warren to essentially say that they want strong response to what Russia is doing in Ukraine. One such member who we spoke with yesterday, Boris Potopenko, uh, is very integral to the discussions that are going to be happening here today. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Certainly we saw that there was an increase in the sanctions that President Biden spoke about today, um, including uh, a number of economic sanctions. Do you think they're strong enough? Should Ukraine, for example, um, uh, particularly uh, have additional support? Uh, did you want to hear more of that from the president? President Biden has taken a very strong position. Two tranches of sanctions. We need more. The president of Ukraine, the people of Ukraine, they're fighting for peace, but not peace without justice, not peace without liberty. And this the world needs to grasp. There will be no more deals unless Ukraine has its rights. Do you think the president should have been stronger on the type of economic sanctions? For example, should Russia have been excluded from the swift international banking system? Would that have been the greater sort of punch added to this? And also the discussion about NATO troops, because Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Do you think that that's a possibility or something that the president and NATO allies should consider? I know that President Biden fought hard to have SWIFT added to the sanctions list, but we also know that Germany said that it will not participate. Without mm -hmm. Germany, SWIFT, uh, canceling SWIFT would not have the tangible effect. We need to help Ukraine despite Germany's reluctance. Germany has to be brought on board. And lastly, before we listen to a number of people who are in this community and who are watching so closely what's happening, it is gut-wrenching for so many people around the world, especially you with your 80-year-old brother there right now. What did he tell you today? He told me that he was going to his uh, daughter-in-law's uh, home because his son, her husband, is in the territorial defense, and he left to fight for his homeland last night. Boris, we appreciate you so much yesterday and today. We thank you so much, and we wish certainly your brother the absolute best. We now want to turn to someone who is in Ukraine right now. I had a chance to speak with her just a few hours ago. She explains exactly what is going on in Kiev right now. Of course, we are uh, very scared. I woke up today at 5 a.m. Uh, from shellings. I heard shellings. At first, I thought that it's, it's just a dream. But it wasn't. Kristina Robozhuk tells us she's about 20 minutes from Kiev's airport. She's a Ukrainian citizen watching Russian leader Vladimir Putin's every move very closely. People in Ukraine are trying to, um, to keep calm and to, um, to, be, uh, to be systemic and to be very rational in their actions uh, right now. I've, I see a lot of solidarity in the Ukrainian cities. A mass exodus of people from Ukraine's capital. Many people are trying to leave Kiev, which is hardly possible because uh, of the of the heavy traffic and uh, the military um, the, the, mil the military vehicles are moving as well. In Michigan, at the Ukrainian Cultural Center in Warren, Vera Petrusha has been in contact with her family in Ukraine. My one cousin in Kiev um, is there hunkered down in a cellar and I asked how we could help and she said how, she doesn't know because um, money, ATMs are out of money, food, stores are closing down. And um, so her, basically her response was, we're still breathing. She runs a nonprofit in the country focused on orphans. She and her son, who she adopted from Ukraine, talking every day about the unfolding crisis. Over the years, Ukraine has actually implemented um, programs to help the children in foster care and things. So I'm afraid that that's all, all going to be um, kind of oh, go backwards, basically, if um, with this invasion and things that there are going to be many children that need help um, with their parents being lost to war. It's the third decade of the 21st century, and it's completely unacceptable for one country to simply overrun another country's borders and take it over because of their fantasies that they're all one people or the other nonsense that 
Vladimir Putin is spouting. Michigan Congressman Andy Levin is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Ukraine is not a member of NATO, but some have still postulated the U.S. could intervene. The president has made it clear that uh, he'll defend every inch of NATO territory. That is a very specific thing to say. Do you see the president perhaps breaking that promise and intervening depending on how, what Russia does? No, I mean, I think that the president has been uh, very clear that um, that uh, we will honor our Article Five commitments under NATO, which is that we will defend each other as if it were our own territory. So Ukraine is not part of NATO, and we really need to avoid a third world war. And this emergency meeting is now underway. You can probably hear the speaker behind me uh, talking to probably about 100, 200 people who have gathered here, many, many of them members of the Ukrainian-American community, members uh, just of the community here in Warren, showing up to really demonstrate their support for Ukrainians. They are asking that anyone donate to Ukrainian relief. We'll get a link up on our website on how you can do that. Also, a lot of them focusing on the 1.5 million refugees that are already in country and having concerns about the potential for a worsening crisis on that front. We're live in Warren. I'm Hillary Golston, Fox 2 News.